Welcome to Pencil Leadership. I'm Chris Anderson, success and lifestyle entrepreneur, and I'm on a mission to help you realize your full potential so you can leave a positive mark on the world. So if you're ready, take out your pencils and let's begin. And if you want to make a difference in the lives of others, share this episode, go over to Apple Podcasts and follow us there to leave a positive rating and review and together we can leave a bigger positive mark on the world. Hey, welcome back to another recording of Pencil Leadership. I am Chris Anderson, your host for this show. I am excited today to be talking with a gentleman who kind of, we have the same kind of idea and passion with helping individuals, leaders, you know, live their true potential, really open up what their uh, potential is in their world and in their lives. And so uh, we're going to be diving into that today with Tony, Tony Martinetti. And I want to make sure I got that right. Tony Martinetti. And, uh, you know, Tony is a lot of things. He's, he's doing a lot of great things. He's done a lot of great things, but what he really does, like I mentioned is he helps elevate leaders, um, and equip them with the tools to navigate through change and unlock their true potential. And he also is the host of the virtual campfire podcast and author of climbing the right mountain, navigating the journey to an inspired life. And that's what we're going to be kind of basing our conversation around today. So Tony, welcome to Pencil Leadership. Thank you so much. I'm so thrilled to be here, Chris. I know yeah. we had a, a long journey to getting here, but that makes it even more sweeter. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. And it, it, it's going to be a good one then if we had to go through all that adversity, right, to get to this point. So I'm looking forward to it. Uh, if you want to just real quick, high level, tell tell the audience, those listening, tuning in a little bit more about yourself and about your book and we can yeah kind of dive in after that sure so um my journey to becoming a coach um and an advisor to people are really it really came from a background in in industry i was um 25 years in um in biotech and high tech as a finance and strategy leader and then realizing that that's not what really lights me up. That's not what inspires me most. Uh, what inspires me most is to really see the brilliance in other people and help them to create the, the life of fulfillment and inspiration that is deep inside of them and make sure that they're putting that out in the world. So um, I had to find that for myself. Um, the long journey of getting to myself um, was really what what I'm all, you know, what I've discovered. And once I did, I wanted that for everyone else. Um, so the, the book climbing the right mountain, you know, it has a lot to do with, you know, a bit of my story, but also what I've seen in the people I've worked with, which is this element of striving to get to the top of this mountain and then feeling like, is this it? Is this what I really wanted? Um, I don't feel what I wanted to feel. And I had to sacrifice a lot to get there. Now what? how can I get on the path that I really want at this point? Um, and my answer to that is, you know, there's always time to, to change the course, to get on the path. And it doesn't have to be a completely different industry or leaving your job. There's many different ways to change course. So, yeah, no, I think it's, and it's an amazing thing. Cause so, especially in the time we're in right now, we hear so many people, you know, it's a great, um, resignation. People are quitting their job to try to figure out where they really want to be and what they really want to do. And you see so many people freelancing or building their own businesses. I feel like now more than ever. And so I think what, what you're doing is so needed with that. Mm -hmm. so, but how, with your journey, how did that, I know you said you were, you know, in the career and you're like, this is not for me, but how did you break yeah. through and say, okay, I, I have to do something different. Like, because there's fear, there's uncertainty, all that. So how did you get through those to start that uh, navigating your own journey? Yeah. As, a, as we often say, there's a double click that into this story. I, I just gave you, gave you the, the surface. Um, but now I'll double click in and just tell you a bit more about what really was the journey. Um, you know, and I'll go back so I can bring you forward. I... I was a creative child who really loved painting and drawing and I was the artist. And, you know, there was this expectation that I would go on to do things in the art world. Uh, in fact, I was expected to be an architect or something to that effect. Um, and then, um, you know, a lot of the well-meaning adults told me, you know, you should do something that's going to, you know, that you don't starve um, and that you can make a living. And so I shifted gears, went to, 
you know, first studied pre-med, then went into um, shifted gears into business because uh, cutting up people didn't really, <laughs> wasn't really appealing to me. Uh, it started to become daunting about, you know, that path of becoming a doctor. So I, I married a few different things up into my career, which was, you know, getting into this world of biotech where I was able to focus on science, but also business and enable that science through the work that I was doing. Um, incredible journey. And I loved the work in the sense that what I was doing and the people I was working with and the leadership lessons I learned from people I was with. But what I discovered along the way is that I was working so hard to be something that I wasn't. And so much so that it was burning me out. Um, I would work harder and harder and harder and sometimes feeling like that, the martyr of sorts, like I'll just work hard so that other people don't have to, um, I'll put in the extra time so that I can be seen as the hero. Um, all these like really toxic, um, ideas about what it means to, to, you know, do the right things and, uh, you know, um, the purpose of getting to the top. Um, and on the outside, everyone saw that as like, wow, this guy's really amazing. He does great work. But on the inside, I was dying. I was like sacrificing all the things that really I cared about um, in an effort of my work. Um, and it came to the surface around this time when I was feeling burnt out. And I had to like really come from this dark period and figure out what really matters. So I started to to come up from this dark place, connected to the hope of like, I got to do something different so that I'm here for my son, for my family and uh, connected with what's real. So I started to dig up from that hole. And eventually all of that clarity, those little moments of clarity led to this moment where I was sitting in a boardroom at a biotech company and looking around, still in a finance role, um, but realizing as I looked around that there's um, these leaders who aren't leading for the right reasons. They were leading because they were worried about you know, how they look they want to lead because they felt as though it was part of, you know, what feeds their ego. Mm -hmm. And I said to myself, Hmm, I think I've been, been enlightened enough to know that this is not what I want anymore for myself. And it's not what I want for the people in this room. You know, we need to inspire people. We need to, to, to make them feel something um, when they come and work for a company, especially for a company that saves lives. We can't be, we can't be wasting lives. Um, yeah in the process. So I decided to, to, to get up and walk out. Hmm. Um, very bold move considering that, you know, that could be career limiting, but yeah. at that point I felt like I had enough. And I said, I'm going to leave this room to change the room. And that's what I did without a plan, without a map, without a boat <laughs> to jump into. Yeah. I literally leapt out into the unknown. Um, and that was the point when I realized that I've, I've got to do the thing that is in my heart that I'm meant to be doing and, mm -hmm. and not continue to hide uh, myself. Um, that's the start of my journey into the world of really helping people to live their, their life of purpose. Yeah, that's huge. And, you know, so much of your story you know, resonated with me and kind of the same thing, just got to the point, just quit, just had to go after, you know, again, what, I felt like I was meant to do and in, in the calling there and it's scary. It's kind of, it was yeah. kind of a <laughs> wake up call when you, you go from having that, you know, nine to five that you feel comfortable in and supported and, and everything there financially and all that to, you know, all right, you're, this is it. You got to sink or swim, right? Here we go. And yeah. uh, so it's, that's a huge thing. And, you know, for those listening, I mean, starting out trying to figure themselves out and, you know, finding yourself was kind of big in, in your journey and, and same as yeah. mine. And, and a lot of listeners here, how, you know, especially for, I think men, a lot of men, we, we struggle to you know, really, I feel like know ourselves because we have to yeah. for so long, put on a certain facade or we have to be a certain way based on family or, or location or environment, things like that. So we almost forget who we really are. Yeah, we, we lose that sense of ourselves and, and what we were created to to be able to do in life. Yeah. So, how would you like guide those listening to start kind of maybe breaking down that shell that's around themselves to start letting you know 
as cheesy as it might sound, let that light kind of shine, shine how it's meant to. Yeah. Well, one of the things that really comes to mind around this, and and I love how in looking at your behind you, there's a shield. Yeah. Yeah. You know, we have to let down the shield and say it's okay to ask for help. Mm-hmm. Um, in fact, it's you know some of the best and most successful leaders in the world um, will tell you that um, they're they know that asking for help is what gets them further along. Mm-hmm. Um, but that first time when you ask for help, it feels so vulnerable. It feels so wrong because it's like the old thing, like, well, men don't ask for directions. <sighs> right. Right. But, but the thing is when you ask for directions and you, you show people that you really, you know, we are headed, um, what happens is people are more than happy to help mm-hmm. um, because you're showing up authentically as who you are. Instead of putting on a facade of, you know, I know where I'm going. Don't tell me, you know, what I need to know. I already know everything. I don't need your help. Right. Um, That ego gets in the way. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. So letting down your shield, your guard, and allowing yourself to be more you. Um, And and I say that because authenticity is always being like overly um, shown out there. But it's about really letting yourself out of the cage. Letting yourself out there and being more honestly you. Yeah. Um, and I'm just going to, you know, close, you know, close out this particular conversation with one other thing, which is I always say that like, um, inspiration comes through honest conversations and the first honest conversation that you have is with yourself Mm -hmm. is like, where am I not being honest with myself? Yeah. You love listening to podcasts, but have you ever thought about starting your own podcast? Maybe you want to build a brand, grow your business, or are looking for an excuse to talk about your favorite hobby. Whatever your reason for making a podcast, Buzzsprout is the place to start. Since 2009, Buzzsprout has helped over 300,000 people launch their own podcasts. Buzzsprout walks you step-by-step through the whole process and will give you powerful tools to start, grow, and monetize your podcast. Ready to get started? Click the link in the show notes to get our free step-by-step guide to starting your podcast today. Yeah, I think that's huge because we get, and it goes back to the, and this is a whole different topic for a different day, but like the school systems and, you know, like at, at the age, you know, 17, 16, 17, 18, whatever it is now, going to college like picking the career for the rest of your life at that age like at that age you know i we're as men are just we don't have any clue who we are really you know we're trying to fit in we're trying to figure out who we are as men what it is to be a man sometimes like there's so much unknown there and then trying to pick a career that we think we want to be in and sometimes it works and it's great and that's fantastic Uh, but i think there's so much potential for men to to truly live into Mm -hmm. that we don't allow ourselves to kind of figure out like you said kind of and and so we build up these walls and you know we just stick it out and we you know kind of bite the bullet and and go at things because of whatever reason that pride you know Mm -hmm. we need to support the family we need to just do this to look good in society's eyes whatever it is Mm -hmm. instead of really leaning in because there's so much like you said, you were in art and, and you had that ability. And there's so many men out there that have so much skill and ability and things that they could create a life for or create a life around and bring so much wonderful joy and, and everything to the world through that. But we're missing it because, you know, we're not we're not allowing those conversations to have be had in 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 our own, you know, time in our own space. So. Yeah. What I mean with that, like, there's so much to navigate to get to that. So if we start having those conversations, how would you, you know, how would you direct someone to start making those changes once they have those conversations with themselves and understand like something needs to happen? You know, pride's coming coming down. You're having those conversations. Yeah. What's kind of the next step? Yeah. So there's so many different paths that um, we yeah. can take. And, uh, and, and really what happens is we have to follow the intuition of what's showing up. And one of the things that came to mind, just even as we were, you know, as you we were describing this, is there are a few different things that um, I often allow people to open up to. 
is the beauty of being wrong mm. and being okay with it. You know, oftentimes we hold so, so strong to like, well, that has to be, I have to be right. If I don't make the right move, then I'm going to fail. And therefore I'm going to be in this place of like, you know, what do I do with the pieces, picking up the pieces that are broken. And ultimately that's the best thing you can do is, is take chances, but use, uh, you know, you want to take measured risks Mm -hmm. into the next step that you take, which is to say that if I move into this next thing that I'm thinking about, let's just say it's a, you know, the next step in my career or the next big thing that I, you know, transition in life. Um, Think about what's at risk here, really. Mm -hmm. Is it, you know, uh, a ding to my pride? Is it, um, is it really uh, a risk to your life? I mean, that, that is the case, be careful. But um, I think we need to be careful about holding ourselves back from potential because we feel like, what will people think? Mm. Right? Yeah. Um, And if you are wrong, that's okay. Yeah. It's okay to be wrong. Because when you're wrong, you're learning. You know, you're able to think again as, you know, to borrow from Adam Grant, you know, his beautiful book, which I think was just like, even the title alone is just a great way to think about it. What if you're wrong and then you learn? Mm -hmm. Um, That's great. And I'll take this one step further, which is to say, you know, we can't hold ourselves back by the titles we we have. You know, I allow people to, to, I I use this thing that's called um, expand your vision, narrow your focus. In, in coaching, which is to say, oftentimes we hold ourselves in these places of, I am, you know, a finance you know, person, I, a finance professional. So mm-hmm. therefore, that's what I do. But what if you step away from that and say, well, what if I'm not just a finance person? What if I am um, a person who's, you know, strong with analytics, but I'm really good at seeing the bigger picture? And, you know, what are there's other things about me that I haven't really tapped into? Stop putting yourself in that box, expand beyond the box and see what else is possible Mm -hmm. and look on the periphery, see what else you might be interested in tapping into. And once you see that, then narrow in and say, this is what I'm going to focus on next. Yeah. And allow that to be the next move. Yeah. And that's a great point too. kind of being okay to, to mess up, to be wrong, to fail, whatever it is, because it's all learning moments. And I think, again, the school system kind of hinders that because you mess up, you're wrong. It's kind of frowned upon. But, uh, but I also think that when we get in that mindset, that hinders us as well to try those maybe avenues of maybe, maybe drawing or painting. Someone thinks they like that, but they don't want to because they're afraid someone might, make fun of their artwork yeah but when in turn they could be amazing but again that fear yeah we're missing out because we don't want to take that chance because we're worried about you know what everyone else will say you know starting that business you know what is everyone going to say oh yeah good luck yeah it's not gonna happen because there's so much negativity because we've been just you know programmed and fed all this um from a certain viewpoint and then we put so much weight in what other people say instead of, you know, doing what we think's best and learning and growing and, and just continuing forward. I think that was huge. What you said there about the, the failure and, and, you know, being afraid to do those things. Yeah. It's a, there's something about like the person who risks going into the arena, you mm-hmm. know, to borrow from, you know, Roosevelt's quote, you know, this element of having the courage to just put yourself in there mm. and risk yeah. everything to, to put, you know, put something out in the world that you've never done before. I mean, granted, there's a lot of people who are doing amazing things in the world and you may think like, Oh, there's nothing new about what I'm doing, but oh, huge. Yeah. But you doing what you're doing is what makes it unique. And also yep. pretty, pretty much something, you know, you can say to yourself, wow, I'm proud that I at least put this out there. Yeah. It, and that kind of opens up the whole you know, comparison is a thief of joy. We look at someone else who's been doing it, you know, 10 years and we're starting out. And I found myself doing this like, oh, you know, well, they're doing it. So, you know, can I really do that? Like, am I ever going to get there? And all those negativities start yes. slaying thoughts instead of like, hey, this is where I am now. And this is how much I've improved from yesterday or, you mm-hmm. know, a month ago. And looking at it that way, that's, I think, a huge hindrance as well and we have so much access to everyone else yeah through social media now we see all the 
uh, you know, the social media perfection out there and we don't see all the negativity. We don't see all the things they went through the hardships. Mm. So we just see this polished, awesome result. And yeah. it starts to, you know, it starts to imp- or increase that imposter syndrome in our lives and, and how we feel negatively about where we're at. And I think that's another thing when we look at other people's sort of what it's the quote, don't, uh, don't compare your chapter one to their chapter 10 or something along yeah. those lines. I think I that's a huge you. thing. Yeah. Yeah. And I think one of the things that around this, this uh, topic, you know, this element of giving up too soon, cause you feel like, Oh, if I can't be the best, if I can't, yeah. you know, if I can't be like them, you know, why am I even bothering? Well, you know, you, you have to be committed to the long game and thinking about like, how can I continue to make those steps, continue to be in, in the process of becoming who I want to be. Um, it's, it's something that you really have to, um, be intentional, you know, to be in this space, um, whatever it is that you're, that you're off to, you know, no one just picks up a guitar. Well, I shouldn't say nobody, probably like Jimi Hendrix, right. and just like, you know, jams are jams away and they become like the virtuoso. It's mm-hmm. just, you have to commit to the process yeah. and there's peaks and valleys along that process, which moments when you're like, Oh, I'm no good. And then moments you're like, oh, that was pretty good. And then there's yeah. moments when you're up and down and eventually time goes by and you're like, look back and you say, wow, like, how did I get here? Yeah, exactly. And that, that's kind of with your, you know, with your book, Climbing the Right Mountain. And, and I talk with people and I give them the kind of visualization of climbing a mountain. When you're climbing a mountain, yeah. you know, the peaks, like that's where you're going. You want to get to the peak, but you, if you're just staring at that, like yes. if you're constantly thinking like, I want that, I want that, I want there, I want, you know, whatever it is. And you're not watching where you're walking and you're not watching your steps. You're going to get tripped up a lot, a lot more and a lot more commonly instead of you're like, okay, that's where I'm going. I'm getting there. So yeah. now where do I need to go? What's the best route and, and watching now in the present moment to get closer to that peak. I mean, you can, it's always good to glance back at it. You know, keep keep your eye on it, make sure you're heading in the right direction, but still then looking at where you're going. I think it's a huge, huge piece of the journey is not focusing so much on the end result, knowing that's where you're headed, but then worrying about, you know, today, what am I grateful for today? What can I do better today? Who can I help today? Taking that step on the journey. Fantastic. Yeah. I I mean, it really resonates what you're saying. I mean, um, you know, we definitely were meant to come together here. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So I think, I think it's just, yeah. And it's so cool to, you know, when you see people kind of have that light bulb moment and it's like, Oh, I, I can do something different. I, I am meant for more because we all are. And we yeah. just get so boxed in and beat down from the world. Cause that's, yeah. we see all the negativity or we hear it all. And um, it's, and it's crazy. So I just saw, a video Steve Harvey was doing, uh, the comedian, if you mm-hmm. don't know who that he is for those listening, but he was saying that an oak tree, and you know, it starts as, a, as an acorn, it starts as this little seed mm-hmm. and gets put in the ground. But if you put that seed in a two foot pot, that is not going to grow into an oak. Yeah, it's not going to grow yet. into the huge oaks that we know. And, and the, it's going to be condensed. It's going to be small because of the environment it's in. And he said, we're that seed and we can't allow the environment to suppress, you yeah. know, the mighty oak that we're meant to turn into. And so we have to, we can't let that dictate what we do or who we become. And, and that's just, man, it's so crazy. Yeah. Like yeah, our environment, like we just can't allow it. Yeah. I think, you know, definitely when you say that, it's exactly one of the things that I talk about in my book is these guideposts that are along the way. And one of them is, you know, to check your environment. Um, and I think it's so important to be careful about the environment because it's either going to help you to thrive or it's going to hold you back. Mm-hmm. And um, you have the choice about your environment. Yeah. Um, people think it's just what they, you know, what they have to live with, but you have a choice. And, you know, when you get more intentional about, what you choose to surround yourself with, then you can actually create something more powerful. Um, So I love that you bring that up because our surroundings, and I knew this, interestingly enough, I knew this as a child, you know, one of the things about my artists, my, 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 what I did as a a child was I painted 
rooms and environments um, <laughs> and emotional experiences of rooms, wow. which is really weird for a child to do. But, yeah. I, you know, when I made that connection, when I started to reflect on who I am now to who I was as a child, it's an interesting thing to see that come together. Mm. And, and I'll just make this connection to my, my podcast, which is I often see this with a lot of the guests who come on my show when I have them reflect on their past and see what were the moments along their journey that have revealed who they are. <laughs> Oftentimes there are things about our childhood, which are uniquely us and they're yep. meant to come out and reveal, but we suppress them. They get held back by the world mm-hmm. and the pressure, the, the societal norms that we have to, to live into. Yeah. Once we let go of that, it becomes freeing. Yeah, it's so crucial to be able to release that. And some people listening might be, you know, hey, I can't just, you know, change my environment. Like, yeah. this is just where I am right now. I'm stuck here for now, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, to to a point, yeah, maybe you can't just up and move and get out uh, completely of where you're at. But, you know, the, the most crucial environment starts in your mind. Yes. And if you can start there and you know, have the, have the attitude of gratitude, have, you know, a more optimistic outlook and start planting those seeds in your mind and do your best to guide or guard yourself against the negativity out there. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a huge start along the path. Um, and, and we got Scott, uh, Holderson. Thanks for tuning in, Scott. He says, everything is a okay. Uh, you're starting as an Oak. So uh, we appreciate you tuning in Scott, but yeah, like, (laughs) you've got to plant those seeds in your mind to, to allow the positivity to grow there Mm -hmm. until you can physically get to a better environment, but there's always going to be negativity no matter what physical environment you're in. Yeah. Yeah. I I appreciate that comment. And because it's something about that, that you got to make sure you're fighting against that, the, you know, what people are saying, you know, one of the things that I talked about, you know, putting yourself in a box and allowing other people to, to hold you back. Throughout most of my my journey, I, I would listen to people's advice and I would say, oh, okay, that's what I should be doing. And that's how I should be navigating. But we have to define success on our own terms. We have to define our journey based on what we want. And, and when someone says no, when someone says this is what you can do based on who you are, we have to really be listening to, is it well-meaning advice? Is it based on their perspective of what they've experienced? Yeah, most of the time it is. Yeah. Um, it, we got to be careful about what we take in. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, you know, even like listening to a podcast, listening listening to advice, you integrate what is meaningful to you, mm-hmm. and you leave the rest behind. For sure. Yeah, that's so good. And and you know, like I said, we we have so much kind of in common with our mission and, and goal, and you know, pencil leadership. The fifth trait is that you know, you are created uniquely and with a purpose mm-hmm. to leave a uh, positive mark in the world. Uh, and so I'm curious, you know, Tony, for you, when everything is said and done for you here on earth, what do you hope your positive mark is? Yes. Well, I would, I want everyone's masterpiece to be revealed. Mm-hmm. I want everyone to be, to really leave the world. And I hate to be so dire without, <laughs> having something left inside to have everything that they were meant to be giving the world left on the table. Um, because I think oftentimes we hold ourselves back because we feel like, uh, you know, that can't happen. There's this, you know, muting of our song. We have to let that thing out. Mm-hmm. Um, because it's not just, you know, like, Oh, I'm not living my true life, but you're holding everyone back yeah. by holding yourself back. So be of service, do it for us. If you're not going to do it for yourself. Absolutely. There's people missing out when we keep our gifts inside that that can really benefit from them. So that's, that's a great mark to be leaving. Uh, Tony, again, we know you, you have your podcast, virtual campfire podcast, you know, your book, climb the right mountain, navigating the journey to an inspired life. Where uh, can people connect with you best? Uh, find out more about what you're doing. Well, I think the best place is always my website, inspiredpurposecoach.com. Um, so you can find me there. And also LinkedIn is a popular place for me. So you can find me there. Feel free to reach out. Always up for a conversation. So reach out, have a chat. 
Absolutely. And Tony, again, we really appreciate you being on the show today and sharing all your expertise and guidance. So again, thank you for being on Pencil Leadership. Thank you. It's been really a lot of fun. Thanks. And thanks so much for tuning into this episode today. If you found value at all from this episode, please leave a rating and review on Apple Podcasts. It just helps us get this show, these messages out in front of more people. And don't forget to share this with someone who you think could benefit from listening to as well. Now let's go out and be pencil leaders. Thank you.